Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Noor Networks. In the second tutorial of FI Big IP series, we will be discussing what is load balancer. In computing, load balancing is a process of distributing a set of tasks over a set of resources. With the aim of making their overall processing more efficient, load balancing can optimize the response time and avoid unevenly overloading some compute nodes while other compute nodes are left idle. Let's understand what was before load balancer. Before load balancer, we were using DNS server for redundancy and load balancing purpose. As we all know, the role of a DNS server, DNS server contains the entries for name to IP mapping as you can see over here. DNS system works much like a phone book by managing the mapping between names and numbers. DNS server translates a request from name into IP address controlling which server and end user will reach when the type of domain name into the web browser. When the end user type a domain name into the web browser. So these requests are called queries. Simply direct multiple DNS record for one host name toward the various IPs serving web service request traffic is routed at the DNS level so there is no additional server configuration changes to make and no software to install. As you can see over here the client requests are being sent and over here the DNS server is resolving the queries for the user. But due to no limitation, we no more use DNS as a load balancer. Most notably, DNS always return the same set of IP address for a domain because it does not check for network or server errors or outages. So at times, it may direct traffic toward servers that are inaccessible or down. So most probably what will happen guys are the end user sitting over here when query for any of the requests when they type the domain name the dns load balancer will resolve the query but it doesn't have a detailed overview or you can say a visibility of this particular dns servers so in this case there is a high possibility even the server is down it will try to reach over here since this uh, particular dns uh, i mean the dns server which is acting as a load balancer doesn't have uh, insights or you can say a uh, detail overview of the health of that particular server. So this may cause some errors or outages and there is a high possibility that it may direct traffic towards that particular server which is inaccessible or down. And here is where the load balancer comes into the role. The major difference uh, when we say between the load balancer and the DNS server is that load balancer always monitor whether the servers are up and working or not services running on the specific device is properly running or not load balancer also monitor the content what user expect to see so there would be a load balancer over here a proper load balancer instead of the dns server it will not only monitor whether the, this particular servers are up or not even it will monitor the services running on the specific devices and it also take care that what type of content the user is expected to see when we will move on in our further tutorials we will understand these things very much clearly so guys how the load balancer works it is a device that acts as a reverse proxy it distributes networks or application traffic evenly on the basis of different parameters across a number of servers. Let's understand this point one by one. A reverse proxy. So what is a reverse proxy? A reverse proxy is a type of proxy server that requests network resources on behalf of a client from one or more destination server. As you can see over here, the load balancer is also doing exactly the same thing. A reverse proxy provides an additional level of abstraction and control to ensure the smooth flow of network traffic between clients and servers. So as you can see, a load balancer is also accepting a request from this client. 
the load balancer is accepting a request from all these clients forward it to a servers that can fulfill it and return the server request all these server requests are then returned to the client adding a welcome layer of security a load balancer is effective in protecting system against web vulnerabilities the load balancer sits between the external client and your internal services the load balancer is sitting between the external client and your services this preventing anyone from directly accessing your applications so as seen over here a load balancer ultimately forward the user or a web browser request to web server as you can see over here however the load balancer protects the web server's identity it also moves a request strategically on behalf of web server typically to help increase performance security and reliability load balancer helps to keep web traffic flowing seamlessly along with improving server efficiency and ease of maintenance they also provide an important layer of additional cyber security so in short a load balancer acts as a traffic cop sitting in front of your servers and routing client requests across all servers capable of fulfilling those request in a manner that maximizes speed and capacity utilization and ensures that no one server is overworked which could degrade the performance so what are the benefits of load balancer it increases scalability redundancy is one of the benefit reduced downtime increased performance efficiently manages failures increases the flexibility it increases capacity and reliability of applications it improves the overall performance of application by decreasing the burden on servers so coming to the load balancer categories there are two categories of a load balancer the layer 4 and layer 7 when we talk about layer 4 layer 4 load balancer distributes connection based upon data found in the network and transport layer protocols such as ip tcp udp ftp and so on layer 7 load balancer the one on the right side distribute connections based upon data found in application layer protocol such as http That's all in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will see the installation of FI load balancer in VMware. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please subscribe it now and do share with your friends. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.